Alright, so final exam, problem number four. Um, in general, I do uh, um, not tell you if it's going to be 3D or 2D, um, but I think this semester that, I'm, that we're doing this online, I did not do a good job, I think, explaining it in 3D. It's hard to visualize, hard to teach it. Uh, online in 3D and because I've had a few uh, professors kind of complaining about their students um, inability to draw shear and moment diagrams uh, so I think we'll do it 2D where I'm going to ask you for hey draw the shear and moment diagram and calculate the stress you know at this location at this point so that's what we're going to do <coughs> on this video this problem right here all right, we've got this beam. Uh, this is a simply supported beam. Um, and so first of all, uh, this beam does have an AY and a BY. Please, please, please don't get this mixed up with a cantilever beam, right? A cantilever beam that's right here that uh, it would have like an AY and a moment at A. And there's nothing over here. Don't draw anything over here. Don't draw something that's not there. Your your you know your shear diagram should definitely not have some you know force right here at the very end that didn't exist. Don't don't you know do things that don't exist or don't make sense just because it, that's what you think a shear or moment diagram should look like. You know these are rooted in the you know physical forces that are actually happening uh so all right anyway uh so you're gonna have to do statics to you know solve for what's happening here and here for if it was if it was a cantilever beam do statics to find this moment at a and this force here at a so let's do that real quickly so let's summing the forces in the y direction a y plus b y equals or, or minus 60 equals zero and let me sum the moments about a 60 times 0.5 creating negative moment plus by times 1.5 creating positive moment equals zero all right that would give me by is 20 and then back up here uh, i would solve for a y is 40 kilonewtons okay uh be ready for something a little bit more difficult. All right, and I think this moment equation is the you know the one where the easiest one to uh, mess up on. So make sure you're really slowing down and looking at your moment equation. I'm summing the moments about a. I've got this force that's acting this distance away, 0 0.5. I've got this force that's acting this distance away, creating that rotation. All right, so I've got A, Y, and B, Y, so solve for all the forces that you need. Uh, now I think I'm ready to draw my shear and moment diagram. So here's my shear, V. What do I have immediately? Uh, what do I see? Immediately up 40. So I go up to 40 kilonewtons, and then there's nothing happening there's nothing pushing me up and down so this shear diagram is kind of all right what are the forces that are pushing me up and down some forces that immediately push me straight up and straight down be ready for distributed loads right distributed loads don't immediately push me straight down they they you know gradually maybe linearly if it's uniform or you know exponentially or like an x squared if it is a uh, triangular if it's a triangular distributed load then maybe it's more like this uh, but uh, if it's just a concentrated force right there that's going to push me down by 60 i was riding along up here at 40 now i'm going to go down to negative 20 right go down by 60 to negative 20 then i've got nothing and then this should go back. Was this one 20? Yes. Good, good, awesome. Get back to zero right there. So there, there, there's my shear diagram. My moment diagram right here. Three things I'm looking for. I'm looking for a concentrated moment, right, and a plot. If there was a moment drawn on here, then that would push me straight up or straight down. Hey, how about a cantilever beam? A cantilever beam that has a moment right here. 
would immediately start going straight up or straight down. Um, I think of uh, clockwise jumps it up. So this, if this was a counterclockwise moment, it would it would go straight down. Okay, so that's one thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for three things: concentrated moment. I don't see any right here. We don't we don't have any uh, concentrated moments, so don't have to worry about it. The other two things are the area under the shear changes my moment, and v is a slope of m. All right. So the area under this, this is a positive area because it's above, right? It's above the um, axis. That's a positive area, so my moment changes by that area. This is a 40 by 0.5, uh, so it goes up to 20 kilonewton meters. Look at your units there. The units of this height, kilonewtons, the units of this base, meters. So this is kilonewton times meters, 20 kilonewton kilonewton meters all right and now did it go this way this way this way how did it get there well v is the slope of m so v 40 is this slope v 40 is this slope 40 is this slope 40 is a, it has a constant slope of 40 so this would be linear y'all know that a uniform up here leads to a linear right here all right then my other two things Area under the curve leads to change in M, and V is the slope of M. So here, this area under the curve, this height is 20. The base is 1. So, yeah, yeah it goes down by 20. That's probably good. It's a negative because it's under, under there. And V is the slope of M. This has a slope of negative 20, slope of negative 20, slope of negative 20. A constant slope, which means this is linear right here. If you have a um, credit card or something, you can make sure that's a straight edge right there, or you can just write here linear just to let me know, even though if your you know, pencil's shaky, if, you, if, it's, if your line's not exactly straight, if you write linear, then I'm going to know it's straight right there. Okay, so there's our shear moment diagram. Now, I will caution you. Uh, if I'm going to give a problem like this on the final exam, I'm going to give you a little bit more difficult um, diagram. A little bit more difficult shear moment diagram. Definitely going to throw in a um, distributed load on there. So go back and be able to handle any type of distributed load. Uh, you know, what does that make your shear look like? What does that make your moment, that curvature of the moment look like? Okay, now, next thing I'm going to ask is, hey, what's the maximum of these? Or I can ask, hey, what's the normal stress and shear stress? And maybe I'll tell you the point. And I'll tell you the, or I'll tell you where to cut it. Cut it at AA, and I tell I'll tell you what point to on the cross section to look at. So uh, I can calculate my shear as VQ over IT. Remember that VQ over IT. So what is the V at this cut? That'd be right here where it is 40. 40. Let me look at these. This was in kilonewtons. These were all in kilonewtons. This is 40 kilonewtons. I prefer to write 40,000 newtons. All right. The Q, do you remember the Q? It hasn't been too long since we've done this. Right? Q is this Y bar prime A prime. And so I, I look at the cross section. I look at the cross section. I look at the point I'm interested in. All right, I'm interested in here at A. So I'll start with A prime. A prime is the area away from the point. All right, here's the neutral axis. The area past the point. So that would be this area right here. So let me come back to the Y prime. But this area is going to be 10 by 100 millimeters, millimeters. All right, the Y prime is not just the distance from the neutral axis to the point. The distance from the neutral axis to the point would be uh, 90, but it's to the point and past the point and to the centroid of A prime. So the centroid of A prime, I would need to go another 5. 95 millimeters is my Y bar prime. 
I mean, that is the, you know, thing I'm going to be looking for in your queue. Did you get that Y bar prime correct? All right. Divided by I, was it given to me? No. I'm going to have to take all these dimensions and calculate the I. But y'all can do that for sure. Let me take all these dimensions and calculate the I. I'm going to reuse it in the my over i so let me calculate it up here i i'm going to i'm going to think about this as one solid rectangle one solid rectangle 1 12th b h what's the h2 cubed and then i'm going to subtract two of these subtract two of these subtract 1 12th b let's see 45 h 180 cubed and there are two of those. I've got 2.293, double checking on this, times 10 to the 7 millimeters to the 4th. So 2.293 times 10 to the 7 millimeters to the 4th. And the thickness T, uh, okay, it really changes right here. Do I take that whole thickness, the small thickness? This is just below this flange, so this is just this thickness of 10. 10 millimeters. My units, I think, work out. Newtons, millimeters, 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 five millimeters on the bottom. Newtons per millimeter squared is MPA. I'm going to get a tau of 16.57 MPA. 16.57 MPA. I don't care too much about the um, positive or negative. It's just the same direction as V. This was positive V, this is positive tau, but um, I don't care too much about the positive or negative for tau. I do care positive or negative uh, compression and tension for the bending stresses that we're about to do. All right, so let's do the normal stress caused by a bending moment, right? Bending stress, my over I. So this is going to be an M. What is the M at that location? 20 kilonewton meters, okay. Let me just leave it kilonewton meters for now. Um, I know I'm going to have to definitely get rid of that kilonewtons, but also meters. I like millimeters. Okay, the Y. The Y is just the distance to the point. This is the 90 millimeters. And then the I, okay, this isn't too bad at all. 10 to the 3 millimeters to the 4th. All right, just my units don't work out here. Um, I prefer newtons. So I'm going to get rid of kilonewtons and change it to newtons and multiply it times 1,000. I also have millimeters to the fourth, millimeters, but this was meters. And be careful. You may not, might not have seen this. But be careful. This moment was kilonewton meters because this base was meters. And if I just take 40 and multiply it times 0.5 meters, then, then that's kilonewton meters. Um, I prefer millimeters, so I'm going to multiply times 1,000 again. All right, so I've got a bending stress, 78.7 .7 MPA. Now, I definitely need to say if that's compression or tension. This is how I like to do it. I like to just visualize it myself. I know that a positive moment, this is a positive moment of 20, right? A positive moment leads to a smiley face. So think about this pool noodle. Remember this pool noodle smiley face. The lines on the top get compressed. The lines in the middle don't get anything. The lines towards the bottom get stretched. There's tension on the bottom, compression on the top. This is for a positive moment. There's compression on the top half, tension on the bottom half. We have a positive moment. We're looking at the top half. This is compression. Right? This is compression. Okay, here's how the book would, would have you do it. The book says this uh, formula is negative my over i. So I've got a negative there due to the um, formula. I've got a positive here because it's a positive 20. And this y, be careful, this y is positive because I'm, I'm above, the positive is above the neutral axis. So a negative positive positive leads to a negative and negative is compression. So that's one way, another way you can do it, or you can double check your answer. But, but just be careful that you can handle uh, what, what if the moment was, was negative, 
you know, how does this change compression and tension? Well, I would say that that just makes this into a, a frown. Um, be careful when the Y is negative. If you have some, you know, Y below the neutral axis, then that would be a negative Y. Um, or you can just do like me, just say the magnitude's MY over I. I'm going to visualize a smiley face or a frown and whether I'm looking at the, the top half or the bottom half. So there we go. We've got it. Let's, let's look back over. We did statics. We drew a shear moment diagram. We found tau is VQ over IT and sigma equals MY over M. Not too bad.